Good morning. I'm Lori Brown. Welcome to this news briefing from the 253rd National Meeting and Exposition of the American Chemical Society in San Francisco. We're joined today by Dr. Gregory S. Herman from Oregon State University. He will be talking to us about his work on biosensing contact lenses that could someday measure blood glucose and other substances. Dr. Herman. Hi, thank you. So what I'd like to talk about is uh, about some of the research that we've been developing at Oregon State University. And essentially, we're using a new technology that uh, we're using completely transparent materials to detect biomarkers. And in this case, we're primarily looking at uh, glucose because uh, there's a huge need for diabetic patients to be able to accurately and continuously monitor their blood glucose levels. And well, actually, if you could go back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so with this technology, what we're doing is uh, <clears throat> in the middle of the slide, you can see we have this fully transparent sensor that we formed on a, on a glass tube. And the idea with this example is that this is uh, a catheter that uh, would be delivering insulin from an insulin pump so that you can actually insert under the skin and measure, measure the glucose levels in interstitial fluids. The, uh, on the next slide, we've really been looking into expanding this to be doing uh, integration into contact lenses, and we have integrated the, the sensors on, on uh, transparent substrates that are compatible with uh, what you'd see in a contact lens. Uh, we've been expanding the technology to look at other biomarkers as well. We've been looking at uric acid, which you can also measure in tears, and that's a way of measuring if you have renal disease, uh, for example. One of the unique things that we're doing with this sensor is that instead of, well, one of the benefits of the sensor is that since it's transparent, we can actually integrate many sensors on a contact lens, and it can be right in the middle where your eye is going to be, your pupil is going to be looking out through the contact lens. And that way we can integrate many more uh, con uh, sensors into the contact lens. And if you look at the latest design of the cell phone, uh, like Apple cell phones or Samsung cell phones, they actually use the same materials that we're using for our sensors, so indium, gallium, zinc oxide. And if you look at the number of pixels, uh, transistors that they have in a cell phone per centimeter squared, potentially we could have over 2,000 sensors in, well, 2,000 sensors in a square millimeter on your contact lens. We think that'll help with a lot of the disease diagnostics that we're, we're going towards. All right, excellent, thank you. So we're going to move on to the question and answer portion. Uh, please wait for the microphone and state your name and affiliation before asking your question. Sorry, it's Kath O'Driscoll from Chemistry and Industry Magazine. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the sensitivity of these biosensors and how you've used nanotechnology to actually um, get to those levels of sensitivity needed to detect some of those compounds? So, as you, as you likely know, the glucose concentrations that one measures in tears is actually much lower, uh, orders of magnitude lower than what you would measure in blood or in interstitial fluid under the skins. So one of the things that we've done is uh, we use colloidal nanosphere lithography to, to minimize the size of the semiconductor, the active layer. And by using that technique, which is scalable, is we've actually improved the sensitivity, sensitivity of these sensors by, uh, I think, two to three orders of magnitude. So we're well below the levels that you would need for measuring glucose in tears. Any questions online? Oh. Uh, a two-part question, if you don't mind. First, how does uh, your technology differ from the one that uh, Google uses in their, in their G-Lens, uh, the one they licensed to Novartis? And second, that project seems to be stalled. I heard Novartis is not going to trials as quickly as they thought they were. Do you anticipate that you'll be able to get into trials and get to the market uh, where they have failed? 
or okay. at least are stalled. Okay, so for, for the first part of the question, how do we differ? Uh, essentially, our technology differs in the sense that what Google is, is using and pioneering is using empirometric sensors. So that's uh, essentially st st same type of sensing technology that glucose test strips use. So it's just an electrochemical approach. With us, uh, we're using uh, field effect sensing. So what we're able to do is we're able to measure the change in the electric field near a surface, and that electric field is gonna change the, the conductivity of our, our semiconductor material. So that's one of the major differences is that ours is field effect, theirs is empirometric. The other difference is that ours is fully transparent. So by having it fully transparent is we're able to integrate over the entire range of the contact lens. And I think one of the other big differences is uh, with our field effect sensors, as we scale them smaller and smaller, the current actually increases. Uh, with the amperometric glucose sensing, as you scale smaller and smaller, the current becomes smaller and smaller. It scales with the area. So I think the big difference between ours is that we can actually fit more sensors. Uh, we have potentially higher sensitivity, and uh, the transparency helps with that. So in terms of bringing to market, uh, we're in the early stage of, uh, stages of the research and development on this, and our goal is to work with industry partners to try to move it forward more quickly. Okay, uh, we have a question from Christine Sa, American Chemical Society. She says, the press release mentions potentially using the biosensor for early cancer detection. Is there already evidence that early signs of cancer can be detected in tears, and what kinds of cancer? Okay, so the, there, the, this field of looking at biomarkers in tears is really taking off. In the past several years, there's actually review articles that have come out on the different things that you can sense. And, for cancer uh, diagnostics, there are proteins that exist in tears that can uh, provide early detection for breast cancer, uh, prostate cancer, as well as several others. Uh, ben Valls, the Chemistry World. Could you tell me a little bit about the sort of biocompatibility and the mechanical properties of the material? Is it likely to make a good contact lens regardless of the technology? So the, the thing that, that we've done is that these are very thin films. Uh, primarily they're amorphous films as well, which uh, by having the thin film and the amorphous film, it gives them a lot less strain and stress damage uh, during flexing. And, and we have fabricated these on transparent substrates in the past and went through tests where we flex them a, a fair amount. So I think the reliability should be, should be very good with these. And plus, since this, the area is so small that we would be integrating these onto the contact lens, is usually if you, what happens is the longer you're gonna make something, the sharper you're gonna bend it, uh, the more stress and more prone to failure. And uh, in terms of the communication of, of, so you have your sensors and they are fully transparent, will you be able to develop the communication aspects as well and, and how do you see those working? Well, and, and that's one of the, the interesting things with this uh, technology, e even though uh, if you look at displays, there's a lot of interest of moving uh, a lot of the electronics for driving displays onto the panel is what they call it. And what's neat is with this material, indium, gallium, zinc oxide, the performance of the electronics that you can make with it are actually high enough that you could do radio RF uh, ID communication. So we believe that we can use the same technology for the sensor, the transistor part, and build the circuit on the side that's fully transparent. Another online question? Um, yeah, so Mohammed El Kabaj has a question. Um, they're saying, how can you assure specificity using your technology? So the, the specificity for our technology is primarily being delivered through 
the enzymes. So the enzymes that we attach to the surface are very specific to, to specific chemical reactions. So glucose oxidase is going to oxidize glucose. Uh, urease is going to oxidize uh, uric acid. So we have tested to make, make sure that we're not having any interference from other compounds. So if you take uh, Tylenol, for example, uh, the chemicals in Tylenol could actually give a false positive, but we find that since we're using enzymes that we don't have this issue. Uh, Bela Buswick, uh, ACS. Um, how do you power these thing, uh, things? I mean, after all, it's an electrical device. You've got to have some, some way of providing some, some way of the sensor to work. Right, so our, our ideas on powering this, there, there's a number of ways that people have proposed to power uh, contact lens sensors, and these can include batteries, they can use biofuel cells. We're probably looking more closely at what Google has proposed, where you use a capacitor for the storage of charge, and you charge that capacitor using the RF communication from the antenna that can deliver energy. The idea is that these sensors are very small, there's not a lot of them, so that ideally you're not going to need a lot of power. And you don't need these running 100% of the time. You, you just need to pick a cycle that makes sense for the patient. Uh, but the second question is, of course, uh, RFID technology is, so, uh, is working. What do, what do we do with your telephone? Just download an app and, and then, uh, then I, you say, okay, you're measuring glucose, you press the button and, and you're doing the, the, the measurement or, or what? I, I think, uh, <clears throat> so it certainly depends on the patient. If it's a type 1 versus type 2 diabetes and, and uh, how often, how well their body is able to regulate insulin. For, there's a fair amount of work that's gone into uh, met doing continuous glucose monitoring and typically if you're doing measurements on the 5 to 10 minute time scale throughout the day, that should be good to give you a broad overview of the direction that your glu glucose levels are changing. And what's interesting is you can have the logistics in your cell phone or the, the app which is then going to see if it sees a large change, it can change the frequency of measurements. Thank you. Sam Lemonick again. Have you considered at all uh, privacy concerns? It seems like some patients might be worried about having their information transmitted openly. I, I think that is one of the large issues that need to be addressed with these technologies is because if we start putting thousands of sensors in a contact lens and that information is going to be available wirelessly, uh, we need to do a fair amount of work in terms, well, probably not me, but people, uh, the medical community and others need to do a fair amount of work trying to figure out what's the best way to keep the privacy. I think that's a huge concern. We have another online question. Um, a question from me, actually. So I'm Katie Sorry. Cottingham from American <laughs> Chemical Society. Um, so would, uh, what if a user already uses contact lenses to correct their vision? Would this process be able to be put onto co contact lenses there for prescriptions? Right. So the, the idea with, with these is that since they're fully transparent, uh, that they will not, not be there to the sensing array will not be modifying your vision, so you just need to integrate them with the lens that are appropriate for the individual. Any more questions? All right. Well, thank you very much. The archived version of this session will soon be posted at bit.ly slash ACS Live underscore San Francisco. Please join us for our next, for our next conference today at 10 a.m. Pacific about materials that could lead to self-healing smartphones. Thank you.